In a lot of forums lately, I've been seeing a lot of questions on rolling mills and what you can use in them and what you can't use in them. So I figured I would do a really quick video to answer some of those questions. Hi, I'm Melissa Muir and welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. Let's go check it out now. Here I have a couple of different items that I use routinely in my studio to texture up metal and I'm going to show you some variations and differences of uh, padding and thick adding thickness and different materials. So in this case I have a piece of sterling silver that's been annealed. Everything at this point has been annealed that I'm going to be texturing. So and this is a cupcake wrapper. Very 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 thin and you would not think that you would get a very deep impression but you'll be quite surprised as to what you will have. So in this case what I would do because I don't need the whole thing I would just take and cut down that cupcake wrapper so that I have what I need for my material that I'm going to be texturing. Now keep in mind that these cupcake wrappers have kind of an arc to them so your pieces are going to be a little bit more limited as to what you can do if you go that route. However, there's a lot of people who have a Cricut machine. I don't have one of those. Surprise, surprise, there's a tool I don't have. But you can make your own patterns. You can also use like the uh, little paper punches that you have for scrapbooking. I mean, really, the, it's endless with what you can do. Anyway, so I'm going to be demonstrating this with some watercolor paper. And I'll demonstrate everything really quickly, but I wanted to talk first about the materials that I'm using. In the next case, I have a laser cut pattern. Now, there are multiple companies that are offering these laser cut papers, but they're not all the same. So you might want to try a few different ones and see what you think. I find that those by Rolling Mill Resource tend to have a really deep uh, cut to them, which is really nice because it makes it so that I can actually use their patterns anywhere from two to six times. It just kind of depends on how much pressure I'm applying. Now, instead of watercolor paper, I was over at my daughter's school volunteering and sorting different papers or whatever else, and they had this, this um, kind of a thicker card stock as the dividers between the different things that I was sorting. And I figured I would give this a, a try. It's probably a little bit thicker than a manila folder to give you kind of an idea. It's a little bit rigid and it's also a little bit more rigid than the watercolor paper but almost the same thickness. So I figured we'll give that one a try and see how that works. Now another thing that I have is a texture plate. Now this one you can see has actually been through the rolling mill. They start out quite flat. Let me see if I've got... So they start out flat, okay, and then as you roll this through this is going to curl. Now some people will say, okay, well then it's done, you know, now I can just cut this up and use it for jewelry, which you totally can. However, it is usable again as long as there is enough of a kind of a deep cut or a groove to it, you can totally use this again. It just, you have to take a little bit more effort to get everything lined up in your mill. But I use these again and again, and then once it really becomes too thin as far as the pattern goes, then I begin to cut this up and use it in my jewelry because it's just brass. But these are kind of nice. So I have a piece of copper that I'm going to be rolling through, and if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, I have multiples out there on YouTube regarding the rolling mill and so I'll list these both in the description, links to them, and then also you can click the little eye icon up there in the upper right corner and that will take you to those videos. But you guys have seen before, like when I very first started using the rolling mill, I would take my item and I would roll it up in a, uh, a stack of, of paper towels and I would make sure that I had a, six layers. Three on top, three on bottom. Now, I don't do that as much anymore, but I just want to show you that you can still do that. So what I've done is I've just folded this paper towel, so now I have three layers. If I fold this in half, it still gives me my six, and then I will roll that through with this, and we'll see what we kind of get there. Now, one of the biggest questions that's coming up lately are these steel texture plates. Okay, and there's a couple of different providers of the steel texture plates. The best ones that I like to use and I know are safe 
uh, because they're made for the rolling mill, are these by Bonnie Doon. Now, Bonnie Doon, you get those through Rio Grande. Uh, they are made out of mild steel, I believe, and they are meant to be either used in the hydraulic press or in the rolling mill. Now, you cannot use it interchangeably. Once you use this in the rolling mill, it is a rolling mill tool. And over time, there will become an arc to this, just like we have with some of our other texture patterns. It starts to get kind of that arc, and it's totally fine. You can continue to use this. Um, and as long as you take care of these, they're going to last a long time, which is good because they're not ex they're not inexpensive. They run anywhere, I believe, from fifty to seventy five dollars. Uh, so try to keep your eye open for sales, I guess, or people selling them or whatever else. But they're great. And the thing that's kind of nice about these is you don't have to protect your rollers from them as long as you have some decent rollers on your mill. So if you're using a Durston or you're using a Pepe Tools mill, you're going to be pretty good to go because your, your rolls are hard enough. Those that are made in China or Pakistan or India, mm, it kind of, I, I'm not going to give any guarantees there because you never know what those are made of. But anyway, this is all made to go through those rolling mills. But having said that, I still always line the back of my my uh, plate with some kind of paper, whether I'm doing a paper towel, some watercolor paper, this little cardboard, whatever else. I just, I feel better about having that protection in my mill. Now there are other plates that are out there that are steel and these are hard and you want to protect your rolls from these because these will damage your rolls if you do things incorrectly. So you might have been taught that when you are using the rolling mill you want to sandwich within or you create the sandwich with some metal whether you're using brass or copper either one of those will work fine. I also want to make certain that my metal is thick enough. So I like to use 20 gauge uh, on top and bottom if I'm going to be doing some kind of a sandwich. So what I would do here is I would have my plate, I've got the copper here on the bottom, I would put my metal that I'm going to texture, my padding, and then another layer of the metal to kind of help protect everything. And then I would feel comfortable putting this through my mill. Now, the problem that this poses is these are thick plates, all right? Those that are done by Bonnie Dune have been done very well. It's about half the thickness. So we have added quite a bit of thickness and depending on the mill you have, it may not open wide enough for you to be able to do this. So it's something that you're going to want to play with, okay? And just kind of keep in mind as you do any kind of texturing with that. So having said that, let me show you how to properly set the gap in your rolling mill so that you will get a good impression every time. Now every rolling mill is going to be a little different, whether you have a Pepe Tools, a Durston, I also have a Durston here in the studio, whether it's manual, it's electric, they're all going to be a little different and you're going to need to spend some time with your rolling mill to get to know its little quirks and how to set everything up right. But the thing that will be the same no matter what you do is the setup, okay? So let's talk about this Bonnie Dude plate. I've already told you that I'm going to be putting this little cardboard backing into here, okay? Just to protect my rolls. And then I'm also going to be using the sterling silver sheet, in this case, 20 gauge sterling. And I also have my watercolor paper to help with that. It gives a little extra thickness and it helps to push my metal into the pattern. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to set up the rolls so that they are the same thickness as whatever it is that I am texturing, what I'm texturing with, and in this case, I also want to include the thickness of this paper that's going to be backing my plate. Okay, so this is what I need to find the thickness of. To do that, I'm going to open up my mill until I can insert my item. I'm going to close this down until I get a little bit of tension, but I don't want to close it so much that I begin to compress my metal. However, at the same time, I don't want to be able to pull this out. 
So I rolled this back out, and if I look at my metal now, there is no impression here. If there's a slight one, just ever so slightly there, that's okay. And that actually tells us that you're in a fairly decent spot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add just a little bit of pressure by tightening my rolls ever so little. Now I did like maybe a 30 second of a turn. And again, your mill is going to be a little different. So it just depends on the gearing of your mill. So you're gonna have to play around with that. So now that I've got my gap set, I've tightened just a little, now I'm going to add my watercolor paper. The watercolor paper, like I said, does two things. It gives me a little extra thickness and it also helps to push that metal into my pattern. Now, if this is so easy that you can just sit and turn it, you probably don't have enough pressure. On the flip side, if it's so hard and heavy that you're hanging on it, you've got too much pressure. So you, for me, I want to be two-handing the handle, and you'll see that here in just a second, but I don't want it to be so thick that I have to like really work some effort into this. Okay, so now I'm going to begin to do this, and I can already tell this is too, too loose. Okay, I, that was very easy for me to do. So I'm going to back that out just a bit and give a little bit more pressure here at the top. Okay. And that's a little bit better, but this is still this is still pretty easy, so I'm probably not going to get the best impression. So I did not get as deep of an impression as I would like. Let's see if I can get this. So I still got a very nice impression, but it could have been deeper. So I could have applied a little bit more pressure to that. However, this is kind of nice because I didn't distort or really stretch out my metal. Okay, you can see that we've got a good impression there. But like I said, I can tell by feel, by the feel of it, I could have definitely added a little bit more pressure to that. And that would have been done by tightening this up. And really, quite honestly, the reason that that probably happened is because not only did the back paper compress and the top paper compressed. So there was probably a little extra give because of this paper right here. So now we know for next time, do a little extra pressure. Okay, so the next one that I wanna show you guys is using this brass that's already curled. So I wanted to kind of show how I set this up when there's already a curve to that piece. But we're going to do the same thing. I want to get the gap of my mill set to this. Now I'm gonna show you kind of backwards here um, how I would do this just so that you guys can see it a little easier since you can't see it on the other side. I'm just going to take my, my pattern and I'm going to set it so that it kind of goes along with the curve of my bottom roll. And then I'm also going to use my copper here and just kind of hold them together. And once again, I'm going to close down my mill so that there's a little bit of tightness. I cannot pull it out, but I know I'm not compressing yet. And I'll back this out. Again, no real impression has happened here yet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try the paper towel method. Like I said before, I used to wrap this so that there was three layers on top, three on bottom. Let's just see what happens if we take the six layers all together and roll it through on the top to see what happens with our piece. Again, I'm going to give just a small turn. Here I gave maybe like a sixteenth of a turn. Good, I'm going to get everything laid out. I just want to create my little stack here and I'm going to feed this in to the mill. This definitely has a little bit more pressure and that's a little too tight. So here I'm really putting a lot of pressure, a little too tight. So what I do is I'll back that off and I'll open my mill just a bit. And we'll try that one more time. That's much better. This one I'm happening to give some real effort but it wasn't so much that I could tell that I was going to damage my metal. So we have a beautiful pattern that has transferred over. Notice that high polish, okay? And that came because my pattern itself had a nice high polish to it. Whatever you have will transfer. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. So our six layers of paper towel 
worked beautifully. And then it, we also get the benefit of texturing the back side very, very subtly with the, the paper towel. So it kind of gives us that subtle texture, which is kind of nice. All right, so there's that. So our next pattern comes from Rolling Mill Resources. This is one of their laser texture plates or patterns. And then I've got some sterling silver. I believe this is, looks like about 22 gauge sterling silver that I'm going to use. Now again, I'm going to use that, kind of that cardboard that I picked up from my daughter's school earlier today when I was volunteering, just to see how we get there. But the concept is the same, whether you're using the watercolor paper or if you're using uh, so, like the cardboard, manila envelopes. Again, it's just something that you'll have to experiment with. So first things first, set my gap. Back that out. Give a little extra twist. And now I'm going to create my little sandwich. Now, why am I not putting more around this? Why do I not line this with the copper or the brass on top and bottom? My rolls are so hard and this is so soft. It's sterling silver. If your mill gets damaged with sterling silver or copper or brass, it's definitely time to look at a new rolling mill. Uh, but this stuff is so soft, you shouldn't run into a problem at all. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna come back in. This one again has some really good pressure. I'm definitely happening to work this to get it through, but it's not so tight that I'm going to damage anything. Now, first of all, I have a wonderful pattern that has transferred. Check that out. Beautifully deep, beautifully deep. That was a really good one. And now if I look at my paper, I can see where I've not impressed and where I have. But you hear that? We still have a lot of tooth there. So that tells me I could at least get one more impression out of this one. And quite honestly, I might even be able to get two more impressions. So it's just something that you kind of have to see. As long as I haven't destroyed this, so I don't have any major tears or anything like that, and there's still a tooth, I can reuse that. If I happen to apply too much pressure, what will happen is this will distort, this will be destroyed, and then everybody's unhappy because you think that this ends up being just a one-time use, which sometimes it is. Okay, so the last one that I'm going to demonstrate really quickly is the cupcake wrapper. So I have some 20 gauge sterling silver, I have the cupcake wrapper, and like I said, these are extremely thin, okay? And you don't think that you would actually get a very deep impression with that. So same type of thing here, set up my mill, get my gap set, uh, open it up, get our gap set to our material, back it out, again, no impression yet, get everything lined up, and I'm going to put my paper on the back, and again, that is so that I can help push my metal into whatever my pattern is. Now, if you have really nice rollers, you're going to end up with a really nice surface on the silver that is around the pattern itself. And that's because again, whatever you compress to is going to give you that kind of impression. So if you have pits, they're gonna transfer. If you have a nice high polish, it will transfer. So again, I'm going to tighten this up just a smidge. We're gonna roll this through. This one was definitely not as as much as I could have put on there as far as pressure goes. Oh, but I can see already that I've got a beautiful impression. Okay, so now when I pull this away, look at that impression. And you can see how deep that is. And you can also see those really highlighted spots. That's where the metal touched my rollers and it kind of polished that up. I still have a little bit left to do, obviously, but you can see how that transfers over and really gives us a good effect. So with a little bit of polishing on this, maybe some patina, that texture is really going to pop. Now another question that has come up is what if we have 
something like a texture and it didn't take as well as what I wanted. Now this is going to thin your metal out just a little bit, but what I would do is I would actually put it into my rolling mill, give a little extra turn here so that it's a little bit tighter, and I would roll this through again. And that will help kind of flatten out that texture. I would still need to do a little bit more. I can still see a bit of texture on this. You can kind of see that there. But I would do this again until I get rid of that texture, anneal it once more, and then roll it through again just a little bit tighter. So that's kind of the cool thing about the rolling mills is that even if you don't get the impression that you want, you can roll it out. It's not like you've wasted anything. Roll it back out and do it again or use it for something different. So I hope that helps answer some of the questions that you might have for the rolling mill. If you like what you see here on my channel, please do a couple of things. One, subscribe. If you'd like to be notified of whenever I post new videos, then just click the little bell next to the subscribe button. And then also give me a thumbs up. That helps YouTube know that you're liking what you're seeing and will help them to make sure my videos get in front of more viewers. And that will in turn help me to support you with, again, more videos. Thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next week.